Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. We are doing all types of NFL draft coverage today. We are now going to be looking at the second half of the draft, really, and be talking about how the NFL Super Bowl contenders made out in the first round. And I wanted to start with two of these teams that are potentially in the hunt for the Super Bowl next year, actually making a deal with one another, and that would be the rivals of the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs traded up to the 28th spot where the Bills were sitting in order to select wide receiver Xavier Worthy out of Texas. The full deal is the Chiefs traded their picks number 32 overall, number 95, and number 221 in exchange for that 28th spot in the first round, pick number 133, and pick number 248. So they move up a little bit in both of those instances to move back four spots for the Chiefs. The Chiefs and Bills both needed a receiver in this draft. It was clear that the Bills' strategy in this first round, though, was to try and get some long-term compensation for the fact that their salary cap situation has been a little bit of a mess, and we saw the types of moves they made during this offseason to try and clear that cap space from getting rid of digs in the long term, even though they are dealing with the dead cap situation for this upcoming season, but getting rid of his money down the road. They let go of key defenders as well in the secondary, Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, all of them. And they wanted to try and pick up some extra draft capital, maybe not quite as high as the 28th overall pick, but more of a quantity situation over a quality, and obviously they're hoping to hit on their picks, but they want to have some more shots and some more rookie contracts on their books to make things easier here. They traded down a second time when they were on the board again at 32. They moved down uh, one spot and upgraded from having the 200th overall pick to the 141st, which came from the Carolina Panthers. And the reports early today are that they are also taking calls on pick number 33 as well. I do definitely understand building up assets here. I feel like they have to take Adonai Mitchell at that 33rd overall spot, and I hope they don't as a Patriots fan, because I think the, that Mitchell is going to be a star in the league when he gets there. The combination of him and Josh Allen could definitely be dangerous. I was shocked that he didn't go in the first round, and if he doesn't go 33rd to the Bills or whoever ends up trading up to that spot, I hope the Patriots take him 33rd. But as things currently stand, they have picks 33, 60, and 60 in the second round. They got the third rounder from the Chiefs, their own fourth rounder, and four different fifth round picks. Again, just sort of a quantity over quality thing where if a few of those turn into impact players, I do see the vision for the Bills moving forward here. But as for the Chiefs going up to get Worthy, Worthy is somebody who really benefited from this offseason cycle of the NFL draft process, especially after running the record-breaking 40-yard dash time, a 4-2-1. We know he's an absolute burner. We knew that if you just watch the film on him anyways. And from that point, he was being mocked consistently to the Chiefs at 32, um, at the time at least. And the idea is that he can be similar, at least shades of what Tyreek Hill was when he was in Kansas City, being able to stretch the field a little bit more. We know that Mahomes has the arm power to hit players deep. They haven't really had that same level of deep threats since Tyreek Hill left. And it's been a lot more methodical from Mahomes, which has paid off in two Super Bowls. So definitely capable of it. But 
It would also wouldn't hurt, especially having the drop issues that the Chiefs did last season of making an improvement at the position. So I do definitely think that the fit is makes a lot of sense for the Chiefs. I prefer Adonai Mitchell over Worthy, but I do think that this can be a pickup that works very well for the Chiefs, and it should be a lot of fun for sure. There's going to be clips, I think, when uh, spring training comes around or the off-season OTAs and Mahomes is hitting worthy on these deep shots. You're going to see that on your social media feeds, so definitely be ready for that. But on the note of contenders picking up some receivers, we saw the 49ers make a little bit of a surprise to some people in taking Ricky Pearsall with the 31st overall pick. I have loved Pearsall um, since the beginning of the regular season in college football. He really rose up draft boards following a very impressive combine, but I think that he has everything needed to be a sort of a player that will not bust for a team. And, you know, maybe this clip ends up getting brought up years from now if Pearsall doesn't pan out, but. I just think he is such a fundamentally sound guy. He is a great route runner. He has amazing hands. He just makes the right plays. I'm a Patriots fan. He reminds me some of Julian Edelman, which is part of the reason why I was hoping the Patriots would take him with the 34th pick. I was a little upset when I saw him go off the board here, but... I think it was a good move, and so did Brandon Ayuk, who reached out to general manager John Lynch, saying, that's a fire pick, can't lie, and the reason this move was a little bit surprising was because of the fact that the 49ers are already loaded with offensive weapons, especially at the receiver position, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, by the way, was actually teammates with Pearsall when they were both at Arizona State, but... In terms of the justification as to why the 49ers decided to do this, they have Brandon Ayuk now headed into the final season of his rookie contract. Debo Samuel is in the last year of his fully guaranteed contract. He has another year on the books for San Francisco in 2025, but it is not fully guaranteed. They potentially have an out this upcoming after this upcoming season. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with San Francisco here. Seems like if they were going to make a trade with either one of them, it would have been last night. They are probably in the clear here. And I think that, you know, it seems like the 49ers are just going to push their chips in for this season. They were in the Super Bowl last year. They went to overtime and they had a really good chance to win that game and for them, I feel like if they didn't feel like they can get the level of compensation that's going to help them compete this year, you stick it out with them and you sort of see how it plays out from here. Now, obviously, the Brock Purdy conversation as to how much money they're going to give him when he is eligible for a contract extension next offseason is going to be a huge deal, but... Again, I, I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out. In my opinion, as things currently stand, I feel like by the start of the 2025 season, at least one of them is going to be out of San Francisco. But let me know what you think about that whole situation. And then my final note here in terms of receivers to contenders is, and contenders, just a team that is playoff hopeful. I really liked the move that the Jaguars made. They traded back from 17 and ended up getting Brian Thomas Jr. with the 23rd pick. I think that Thomas has some legitimate wide receiver one potential. They saw Calvin Ridley walk in free agency, and now they get a player who in a couple years can potentially be Lawrence's number one guy. And that Jacksonville receiver room is absolutely loaded right now. Thomas joins Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Zay Jones, all players who I know that Zay Jones was dealing with some injuries last year, but 
They brought in Gabe Davis during the offseason. Add another name there. That's going along with Evan Ingram, who was actually fourth in the entire league in receptions last season. So I feel like this was a really nice pickup for the Jaguars moving forward. But some of my favorite picks from the first round were the cornerbacks that went off the board to both Philadelphia and Detroit. We saw the Eagles get Quinion Mitchell at number 22 cornerback out of Toledo don't let the sort of mid-major label scare you Mitchell should be a really good player they were dealing with a lot of injuries in the secondary last year and we're just very old Darius Slay was the number one for Philadelphia and he has seen his better years sort of pass him by now I actually don't remember whether or not he is currently still on the Eagles, but last year was his age 32 season. Going into age 33 here, he is, you know, a handful of years removed from being an all pro type player. Definitely still a an impact player, but not to the same level. Quinion Mitchell can be that. And the Lions took Terry on Arnold at the number 24 overall selection. And I really like this one as well, where they actually traded up to make this selection to get him the secondary was really the number one concern with the lions last year we saw it sort of rear its head when the postseason came along and arnold in my eyes was the bet most talented cornerback in this draft and they find a great selection there as they continue to try and build up this secondary with some youth brian branch was great for him them for them from the safety position last year and I I just really like this move from both of these teams where I left free agency feeling like they hadn't fully addressed the need and I like the way that they went here some final thoughts here on some other contending teams we saw the Cowboys trade down they were the other half of the Terry on Arnold deal where they actually move down in the draft. They end up getting Tyler Guyton with the 29th overall pick, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. Made sense. Tyron Smith had just left in the offseason. Same with different position, but Tyler Biotish, who was their center, they were going to need some help on the offensive line. They already have these big-time name players at quarterback receiver D-end. I feel like there was definitely... A chance they could have gone with a receiver in this situation but I think that Guyton was a great pickup for them here I have no real concerns there um, again a little bit rapid fire here as for the other players that came off the board we saw the Dolphins take chop Robinson late in this one 21st overall pick Robinson was one of the most the more polarizing first round talents in this draft he is extremely athletic, but it's sort of the conversation to a lesser degree because Aiden Hutchinson was literally a Heisman finalist when he was coming out of Michigan, but it felt a little bit similar to that conversation. He and Jared Verse, I feel like out of Florida State, Verse ended up going to the Rams. I really, I really do like some of the edge rushers that came out in this class, but I feel like Robinson specifically was sort of dinged for his fundamentals, but the ceiling is absolutely there for him in terms of having the ability to just throw some of the offensive linemen that he faced around. And the Dolphins have had a collection of a handful of very intriguing defensive players. Now injuries definitely riddled them by the time the postseason came along and they weren't able to generate any pressure by the end of last season. But Chop Robinson is a nice addition in my eyes. And then I guess final thoughts here would be on the Ravens taking Nate Wiggins, where another very good player, I thought he was very much improved from the 2022 to the 2023 season. We know that he's another one. He absolutely can fly around there from the secondary position. And I like this move for the Ravens where we saw them lose a couple players on the defensive side of the ball 
and they add another threat there. They obviously, in terms of secondary, they already have Kyle Hamilton, who is an absolute monster there. But they add another cornerback. They had just lost Ronald Darby in the offseason. But him and um, their other cornerback, which I cannot believe I'm blanking on right now. I just had the name at the top of my head. Um, it's not Lattimore. It's the other one that I think was in that class. I, I, I have to look this up right now. Otherwise, I'm going to be mad at myself. But um, Marlon Humphrey, that's who it is. Duh. But, yeah, that's a very good cornerback duo, I feel like, in Baltimore next year. Their defense, again, saw some losses in the offseason, but they are still, and they not, not just from a personnel standpoint, but they also lose their defensive coordinator as well in Mike McDonald. So we'll see how they bounce back this year. I feel like they will well, but they are going to be in that conversation for the best teams in the AFC but definitely give us your thoughts on what your favorite and least favorite picks from the first round are. Just done an hour on it, and we're not done just yet. We are going to be doing one final segment on the NBA playoffs from last night. I'm going to go a little bit rapid fire there with the three games that we saw. Try and be as concise as possible. But we are going to be taking our final break here, and when we come back, we will be diving into that NBA action. So stick with us and we will be right back. <laughs> 